Shalom, Shalom. Hero Israel. Is uh, Romans chapter 6 breakdown. Giving honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Start off with um, the book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 1. And it reads What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Um, so now in this chapter, first we have to get the understanding that it has to be read with the mindset of those who read it back then and also read it with the understanding that was written for us to, to interpret and to be instructed out of it in today's time. Um, the point being that, you know, starting off with Romans chapters one through five, you know, those chapters were written um, mainly for those back then, you know, for Paul to explain to to these Jews and Gentiles, mainly, you know, to their prophet. You know, although although, you know, they, they're they're edifying to us in today's time also through through those chapters, but to get the the right understanding we have to separate what was written for us to apply in today's time for example like like what is being said in in this chapter this is mainly for the present time you know is written for us to to learn and apply you know the things those things for today so um you know again you know there's there's the things we have to separate, you know, we have to separate, you know, the things throughout the epistles, not just in these chapters. We have to separate what was written for us to apply today. And we have to separate um, and understand, you know, some things were written for us to to learn on how the things went down back then. And for us, you know, to piece all the things, you know, written, you know, which is in in the uh, in the Gospels and the Epistles, for us to put those things together. You know, so again, you know, some things were written for us to take and apply today, and other things were written for us to get an understanding of how things went down, and how to put the 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 teachings together as far as what was written. Um, speaking currently on the things you know as far as the gospel and the epistles so we can put those things together and, and get get the right you know way that it was taught so that's how we learn out of these things you know because you can't just read it you know Romans 1 through 5 and then jump into 6 and just think you know well everything is just you know I have to apply it with my mindset today when that's not the case. So, again, you know, if you separate these things, you know, then um, the scriptures will, are going to make more sense, and you'll 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 have more of a discernment on on what is speaking to things pertaining back then and things pertaining to now. So, um, let's read verses 1 through 2 one more time. It's book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So, um... You know, this is this is not just Paul writing this instruction to the Jews and Gentiles at the time, but this is to us also to take and 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 apply to today. You know, for for by us I mean 
so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, you know, who are coming back into the remembrance, the understanding, you know, of what the scriptures really mean. You know, that, that, you know, you're in fact Israelites, God's chosen people, according to bloodline, lineage, and prophecy, you know, and again, you know, you, you, you were not, um, how do you say, it? you weren't, you weren't aware of these things that, you know, as far as, you know, being in sin, you know, the prophecies, what they really mean, you know, pursuant to, you know, First John 3 and 4, you know, sin being the transgression of the law. So, so, again, you know, now we know we, that we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't sin, you know, so, so the grace that was given to us, so we wouldn't, you know, abuse that grace, you know, because we know that formerly, you know, the Israelites were given animal sacrifice to atone for sin, which was commanded in the law, you know, but in the latter days, from the times of 70 AD till today, you know, when the temple was destroyed, you know, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai enabling us that grace, you know, to atone for our sins. Whereas, you know, for example, in the past, we had a, a temple to sacrifice in Jerusalem, you know, which is, you know, this, this prophecy, all these things that I'm saying is, is according to, to, to the law and the prophecies, you know, these are the things that, you know, Paul taught, these are the things I wish I taught, you know, he, he told these, you know, Pharisees in Jerusalem, he said, you know, your house is left unto you desolate. You know, in the latter chapters of Luke and in, in the book of Matthew. So, you know, these things are are um are a prophecy. So now, you know, the point of the matter being, you know, in in these two verses, you know, now we're we're dead to sin or you know, we're aware of these things, we made an end of sin. You know, I no longer, you know, live in these type of odious works that we've been accustomed to in, in this society. That we used to think in and not think twice about it. You know, things like eating pork, you know, not knowing, you know, the Lord's name. You know, hating our own people, things like, you know, giving ourselves to lust. And, you know, us being baptized in, into his death, you know, what, what that's, what that's signifying, you know, in, in, in verse three, which I'm going to read in just a moment is, is us essentially, um, you know, being, being, having the understanding, you know, cause we're baptized with that understanding. That's how we, we come into this into this truth, you know, we're baptized in, into Yahweh Shai Mashiach through the, through the Holy Scriptures. Like it says in, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. You know, baptized with the word. So that's how we come into this thing. We're 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 baptized through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So but let me read verse 3 reads Romans 6 and 3 know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Yahweh Shai HaMashiach starting from the apostles on down you know this is speaking back then you know um because Yahweh Shai you know you know he had he had his 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 disciples which is basically uh one that is learned a learned one so the, he 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 taught them these things, and they learned from him. And through the Great Commission, you know, that understanding was spread out, and in due time given to us through the through the uh, spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. 
So now let's go to book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 5. So this is how we're baptizing to you, Yahushua Mashiach. You know, and ultimately, you know, we're baptized into, into his death. His death signifying, you know, the reasons why why he was he was sent, you know, to magnify the law, to be an atonement for sins, and ultimately, you know, according to to the prophecies, you know, to be that one head over the nation, that cornerstone, that sure and tried stone. You know, which it, it all goes together. So, um, let's go to the book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 5. And it reads, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the re washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You know, so... You know, the the washing, you know, when it says washing and regeneration and renewing, you know, that's us being, you know, regenerated and renewed into, you know, the true understanding of how we should walk, you know, coming into this truth as to what the scriptures say. Now, to establish the matter, let's look at the... Um, the etymologies on what the what these two words pertain to. So let's go to uh, Salakish. Bear with me one second. All right. So Salakish. Okay. So it says here um, in the New International Version, he saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And that's the Ruach HaKodesh. Now, looking into the um, word renewal, it says a renewal or a change of heart and life. Um, Cause it also says in, in the, um, in the book of Ezekiel, I believe he would give us a fleshly heart, you know, and also says in chapter 37, you know, he would put that spirit in us and, and, and raise us up in, in due time. Now let's look at the, uh, Concordance for uh, renewal, it says Anak Ainosis, which says uh, definition renewal, renewing, a renewal or change of heart and life. So that and that um, is a com composite of Anakinosis. Which comes from the wording ana, which means up or completing a process, which intensifies, which is a, uh, um, it's part of that, uh, part of the, what forms the word anakinosis, which it says uh, from kino, make fresh anew. Make fresh or new. Properly a new development, a renewal achieved by, by God's power. So we know that um the most high, you know, he's he's lifting up a new standard, you know. You see, you know, Esau, you know, um he he has his schemes coming with the um with the Kobe Bryant Maxine, you know, he also has, you know, his his schemes, you know, you know, in formulation, you know, have the nations, you know, um, they're seeing that, you know, the Israelites, you know, we, we have that remembrance, the most high put that spirit back on us, you know, so all these things are, you know, the, 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 the nations are coming with their tumults, but we know that, you know, all these things were, were, 
were were going to happen. You know, so these things are prophesied from the beginning. That's, you know, if you have the understanding. So it says, uh, renewing, renovation, renewing. So, you know, same way you have a house, you know, you renovate it, you know, you, you redecorate it, you, um, um, and, and you, you find new things to adorn it with, you know, the new, you put a new covering over it. So this is what's going on in these times. And looking at the word for regeneration or new birth, it says of new birth, a new birth, regeneration, renewal from Pauline and Genesis. And this is where um, Esau gets that um, word Genesis from. You know, um, it says rebirth, spiritual renovation. Um so especially messianic restoration. So that's goes that's from the word paling genesia, meaning regeneration or renewal, a new birth, regeneration. Um paligenesia from palin or again and genesis meaning birth or beginning. Which is why, you know, the book of Genesis is given that term, you know, because uh, it's it's one of the beginning and principal oracles of uh, the Most High and his divine utterances. So properly, the coming of new birth, you know, because we have, you know, a nation being, you know, re revived and, and, you know, we understand regeneration, we understand, you know, the Most High doesn't create new spirits, but but He um, sends them back on the earth in its due time. You know, so properly the coming of new birth because born again regeneration it says renewal, rebirth, um, uh, so let's look at this, uh, other concordance it says uh new birth reproduction renewal recreation moral renovation you know so as you're coming into the truth you know and this is what the um first two first three verses of uh romans chapter six is speaking about you know it's speaking about you know leaving your old works you know coming into you know the the things that Yahweh Shai taught, you know, from the apostles on down at that time, and it being established through us in these times. So, um, and, you know, those who are coming back into the fold, having that moral regeneration instilled in them. So that's, you know, the term that is used here, moral renovation, regeneration, the production of a new life consecrated to God, a radical change of mind for the better, affected in baptism. So, you know, we understand that, you know, baptism is not just what, you know, so-called religion calls, you know, a, when you dip yourself in water, but it's more of a term used in, in a um, change of mind or life, change of lifestyle. So, and it says down here, the restoration of a thing to its pristine state, you know, because as a nation, you know, so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, which are Israelites, were being uh, restored in its due time, you know, little by little to its former uh, glory. So that's what these words are, um, what these words are going into. You know, so we have to understand it, you know, as it is written. And this is why it's important to go into etymologies, you know, and also have a good foundation. You know, because not only, you know, do the scriptures give you a history 
and genealogies, and this is me speaking on Old and New Testament, um, which is why, you know, essentially, you know, I said earlier, you have to you know, separate the two, the two things, you know, things written for those who understand back in those times and for them to apply back then, you know, like, like when Paul and Barnabas, you know, they went up to Jerusalem, you know, and, and some of the Pharisees who believed, you know, they were commanding these Israelite foreigners to keep the law. But after that council, you know, um, they were told ultimately, you know, look, start from this, you know, abstain from blood, uh, meat offered to idols, and etc., etc. So, um, <clears throat> so now, you know, those things were just to give, to give an account, you know, of things back then, of how things went down, and, it's like, yeah, and separate that from, you know, what was written for us to apply today. As, as as we come back into remembrance of, of, of who we are, you know, um, and what is required of us. For example, you know, the law was given as an instruction for, um, for all generations, you know, of Israel. Like, like it says in Deuteronomy. So, you know, this is the purpose of these things. This is what we have to separate, you know, and apply to today. For example, the law is uh, just just one of many examples. So, uh, yeah. You know, um, along with the other signs and wonders, you know, um, which tell us who we are, you know, it identifies us as God's chosen people, Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know, the law being a witness, you know, for us to know, you know, what we need to do in this current exile, you know, in Babylon on this earth, you know, through the divine inspiration that Moses was given by the Most High. So, um, And also, you know, the law just is, doesn't serve as an instruction. You know, it contains prophecies. It contains warnings of things to come. For example, you know, Israel as a nation going off, worship, worshiping other gods. You know, idols, which are idols, being caught up also, you know, in other ideologies, practices, you know. That didn't, you know, prosper, you know, they didn't, they didn't prosper us as a people. Things like Christianity, Islam, occult practices, you know, which all these things, you know, these are all philosophy. These are all modes of thought that man has created. You know, worshiping rocks, you know. All these things, you know, um, there, there's still, it's still a snare, you know, to, to us as a people, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. But you know, this is why you have to have that, uh, you know, you have to be well versed. You have to look into etymologies. You have to study. But the problem with, you know, our people is that we're so caught up in these other things that, that, you know, we neglect the things that, that were the tools and the tools that were given, you know, in front of us. For example, you know, we have this, you know, mobile phones, you know, we have the, the internet, we have essentially access to everything at our fingertips 
but we you know we choose to love you know carnal things of his life more than you know more than what was given to us as an inheritance things to keep things we have to do sacrifices that we have to make so let's go into the next precept this book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 15 And, you know, you so-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans, you know, you got to be destroyed because of that. Because you denied, you know, the divine truth which was given to you from the beginning. And you choose to follow the ways of these heathens. And if you're not destroyed already, you know, because a lot of people are already destroyed and overcome. You know, we're enticed by, you know, by these philosophies. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 15. And it reads, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. Verse 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Verse 17. The likeness of any beast that is in the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Verse 19, And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the heaven. So, you know, this is what our people do, you know, we're enticed by these others, you know, uh, images, seducing spirits, you know, doctrines, philosophies, commandments of men and philosophies, you know, and we're enticed by the beauty of these things, the moon and the stars, you know, but we're warned against these things from the beginning. So let's move on to the next precept in the same chapter, verse 27. Which shows us, you know, ultimately we were we were going to go off as a people. Verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whether the Lord shall lead you, and there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. So this was what it was speaking of in verse 19, that these, um, that these images, you know, these, these stars, these, these, these spirits that, 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 you know, these other nations are, 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 are committed to, you know, that was given to them, you know, cause it was written from the beginning, you know, you know, that that they were given to to their devices to their to their idols that's why you know the most high destroyed you know many in the flood you know because their mind were given to the devices of their imagination so this is what is speaking of and this is this is saying that we would ultimately go off and reverence these things Worshipping the creature more than the creator. And it says in verse 20, 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee. Even in the latter days. If thou Turn to the Lord thy God, 
and shall be obedient unto his voice. Verse 31, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. You know, so these things are written from the beginning. You know, this is the purpose of the law. Not only is it a, a testimony, which is um, also instruction it's a it's a warning you know so let's go to um, the next precept it's book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 16 and thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee thine eyes shall have no pity upon them neither shalt thou serve their gods which are idols for that will be a snare unto thee you know, so most high said these things will be a trap and a snare, you know, including the people that were given to these to these images and false worship. You know, the point here being that, you know, the these idols and imaginations that these heathens, you know, are given into would be a snare unto our people. And they still are. Let's go to um Next precept in the book of Psalms. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 36. And it reads, And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Verse 39, Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went whoring with their own intentions. So, we know that this is... Uh, also happening as a pattern of what was written from before, from the times of old. You know, this is why two-thirds of you, you know, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans, you know, you're going to be destroyed if you're not already. So, you know, this is one of the good reasons to have a good understanding of the scriptures. Because the scriptures, they contain warnings, instructions, what to do, what not to do. You know, again, this is what, this is what Paul taught also. Let's go to that real quick in Book of Romans. Book of Romans, chapter 5. And verse, actually verse, chapter 4 and verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where there no law is, there is no transgression. So according to the transliteration, you know, Paul essentially is saying where the law, uh, the law brings abhorrence. For where there no law is, there is no deviation. So, you know, the law is perfect. It tells you um, what to avoid, what to abhor, and what is acceptable or righteousness or justifiable in the eyes of the Most High. I mean, how wish I he came to expound on these things and and show the correct way of executing these these measures contained in the law. You know, so you know, this is what the law brings. You know. Just about justifiable abhorrence and also you know what's what's justifiably accepted now let's go to the next precept in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 26 and it reads take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant 
of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. You know, so these things are written, you know, and the Holy Scriptures as a whole as a witness to our people against our people. You know, this is why the truth had to come out. Starting from Yahweh Shai to the Apostles and the Great Commission and through time received through us. And ultimately the whole world had to know all this because ultimately as a, when the truth would be revealed, it would be a witness and, and a testimony against them and their works. So this is how the Most High works. He sets a snare, lets the fowler come in, thinks he has the, the, the bird in the trap and then all of a sudden... The hunter come the hunter comes in, which is the the higher predator, which is Esau, he's a sword, he comes in and he takes takes the this this um this heathen out. You know, which is you two thirds and these other nations, you know, because ultimately, you know, Esau he's gonna be used as that instruct instrument of death towards you. So again, you know, this is that warning. This is what it speaks about um, in the precepts and, and the verses of the law and the prophets. Now let's go to the next precept, book of Numbers, chapter 17 and verse 4. And it reads, And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation. Before the testimony where I will meet with you. You know, so to get the understanding, we have to look at the uh, etymology and um, of what these words mean. So, Slack, so bear with me. Let me just pull that up real quick. So, this is Deuteronomy 31, 26. And the New Living Translation says, Take this book of instruction and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so it re may remain there as a witness against the people of Israel. So again, you know, the law of the prophets, you know, the scriptures as a whole are ultimately a witness against our people first. You know, and like how wish I said, you know, which which are these two thirds are people They refuse knowledge, they refuse the truth. And ultimately, like how wish I said, you know, the gospel has be has to be preached as a t testimony to to the Gentiles and the nations. So this is what it's speaking about, you know. But. As far as the wording, you know, um, the wording for witness is, it says, a witness, testimony, a recorder. Now, going into the uh, etymology for witness is ad, which is in the Hebrew evidence witness or witnesses so that's what it's saying in number 17 and 4 you know because like it says in the, in this the new international version it says place them in the tent of meeting in front of the ark of the covenant law you know because that's where the that's where they kept the um, testimony the tablets of the law which was written with the finger of God You know, so going into the etymology for testimony, it says Ha'idawath, you know, which is uh, where Ishmael gets his terminology Hadith, you know, which that ultimately means testimony or warning. Admonitions, like it says in the, um, in the usage of it. Or it says uh, the original 
where it is either y. So that's what it's speaking on. You know, when it says testimony. And also expounds on it if you scroll down to the etymology where it will tell you it says testimony of the ten words on the tables as a solemn divine charge. Or um, um, ark as containing tables. So, you know, all these things contain a divine charge. You know, the scriptures, the, the prophets, the prophecies. So, you know, that outlines the point of Romans, uh, the third verse in the sixth chapter. So let's just go back to it. It's book of Romans, chapter six and verse three. And it reads, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, were baptized into his death? You know, so the point being is that, you know, we are to, uh, you know, renew our understanding. And we are living according to what Yahweh Shai came and delivered. To us, so that we in due time may be, um, and that was delivered first, you know, to the apostles and on down, and those that they taught, including Paul and the things that he wrote, and the things that were written for our learning, and how the truth reached us today through the Holy Scriptures. You know, so we through that are baptized into the understanding, which is. The true understanding through the word, like those who came before us, you know, they were renewed, refreshed, you know, these Gentiles, these Israelite foreigners coming back into the fold, the Jews who believed in the law and the practices, but were not given that true understanding until Yahweh Shai came on the scene and expounded on the matters. So now, you know, we're learning from these accounts and taking what applies to us and using it in our walk. This is how, you know, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error because the truth has already been given to us. It's just up to us to search it out. Like it says in Revelations chapter 1 and verse 3. And 1 John chapter 4 and verse 6, Revelation 1 and 3 being, you know, blesses those who readeth and, and keep it the word of, the, of this prophecy. Which is a very popular scripture to us, but let me bring out 1 John chapter 4 and 6. This is book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, again, this is how we're baptized with that true understanding. You know, we're renewed, renovated, you know, like it says in Titus 3 and 5. This is what it's speaking of in, in Romans but chapter um, 6, verse 3. So again, you know, um, we're baptized into Yahweh Shai Mashiach through that true understanding, like Paul was saying. And we're also baptized into his death, meaning, you know, um, the works that he came to do, he came to die for the nation, be a be that atonement for sin, be that head over us, be that sure and tried stone. So that's how we're baptized into his death. You can't take it literally. You can't say, oh, well, you know, that means, you know, everybody's going to die. 
but you know you have to have a uh, spiritual mind when reading these type of um, these type of uh, precepts. This is why you know Paul wrote in the other epistles. You know we walk through the spirit. We judge spiritual with spiritual things. You know, not carnal as carnal men. So, you know, starting from the apostles on down, it, rep it represents what Yahweh Shai, you know, um, he came to do and the work that he came to do to bring the head, the uh, one head uh, above, above the whole nation to the most high. So from the apostles, you know, on down, you know, at the times of Yahweh Shai, you know, this is a representation of them getting baptized, renewed, given that true understanding. You know, and that understanding given through us in its due time through the Holy Scriptures. To know what we should do, how to repent, what's required. You know, that that's what it speaks on. Um being baptized into his death, signifying us being him in, in, in death because cause, um, cause of the things that he did, you know, so we can raise up and, the, and through the things that he came to fulfill and the course and the course that he fulfilled on the earth. You know, and you can compare that to the same similitude of of us you know you know going off dying you know being brought low and then raised up in its due time as a nation you know so all these things are a pattern of things to come same way the the, the braze the brazen serpent was lifted in the wilderness you know representing you know our lowly estate than us being lifted you know serpent symbolizing a form of wisdom and these other those other serpents that were biting the Israelites you know ultimately they were destroyed that wisdom was destroyed and ultimately this worldly wisdom is being destroyed to this truth to the true understanding philosophy you know indoctrinization religion You know, which is that, you know, that worldly, those worldly serpents that were biting the Israelites in the wilderness. So again, all things follow a similitude. You know, things have to be brought low and then raised up. Same way Yahweh Shai had to be brought low, raised up, magnified, and then caught into the heavens. So, you know, we know these things were were um, prophesied to come to pass, same way as in Ezekiel 37, the Valley of the Dry Bones. You know, us as a nation going off, then, then to be raised up, renewed, you know, through that spirit, through the Ruach HaKodash, that's the Holy Spirit. So these are the things that you're seeing that are being witnessed on the, in the earth in this time. You know, the same way Yahweh Shai was delivered up, he had to be, you know, brought low and raised up. Same way we had to be brought low and raised up as a nation in this due time. And that breath of life had to be given. So we understand that. Now let's move on to the next precept. Book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 15. And it reads, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed, ye be not consumed one of, one of another. You know, so we know in the time, you know, that Paul was teaching these epistles, there was a division, Jew and Gentile, practicing Jews and these Israelite foreigners. They were devouring each other. They had that, 
that um the animosity towards each other because you know one of them had that you know belief that was taught in the law and the cut and the uh customs you know the other were these israelite gentiles they were coming into the truth into the fold they had this they had the faith you know but ultimately you know yahweh shai he came to fulfill that work which ultimately abridged the two groups together brought the two groups together and this is what paul was doing in, in his epistles and i believe that's also in let me see if i can get that precept real quick i did i brought this precept out in the previous video but just like i said you know all these things they go hand in hand Blackish, bear with me. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 15. And it reads, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace you know of two making one man that's representation of Yahweh Shai uniting these two groups through the work that he came to do at that time which ultimately is is to our profit so let's go back to um, the book of Romans And Salaki, if you keep reading, you know, um, verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Um, verse 18, for through him we both have an access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. Um, verse 22, in whom ye also are built together for inhabitation of God through, throughout the spirit. So you know all these things, you know, that's what Paul is speaking of in verse 3. You know, um, let me just pull it up right here. Romans 6 and 3, Salakia. Having some technical difficulties, Satan's trying to enter the word. So it reads. Know ye not that many of us were baptized into Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, were baptized into his death? You know, so um, again, that understanding, that's being baptized in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach back then and now. You know, baptized into his death, representing, you know, the works that he came to do and us entering through, through those works, you know, into what was given to us. You know, by the redemption of sins, by the um, the the true practices of the law. You know, and even you know through the things taught in these epistles. So, those are things that that are given to us to to apply today and to to learn from. So um, let me bring out this next precept and we'll move on to the next point. Book of, is the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24. And it reads. And they that are Hamashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. 
Verse 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. You know, so this is what it's speaking about when living in through the spirit. You know, we're not judging things exactly how they're written, but we're, we're given that discernment. This is how we know we have that true understanding because we're judging spiritual things. You know, and that's that spirit of truth. So let's move on to the next precept, this book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 15. And it reads, For in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. You know, circumcision representing what these practicing Jews thought could justify them being just only the works of the law. You know, or, you know, these Gentiles coming to the truth. You know, and even our people now, we think that we're justified by faith alone when those things go hand in hand. Like the similitude that that Paul brought out in Romans chapter 4. You know, belief and works go together. And Yahweh Shai taught that what's in man's heart, which is your mind, is manifest through, through his outward uh, works and actions. So not only do you have to judge spiritual things, you have to have that discernment to show which works are righteous and which are outwardly manifested through men and which are wicked. So that's what it's speaking of. Now, um, let's move on to... Uh, Verse 4 in Romans chapter 6. Book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. And it reads, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Hamashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should so walk in newness of life. So, you know, um, baptism unto death, you know, I explained it, you know, how we are, you know, we are um, baptized into Mashiach Yahweh Shai with the understanding. And through his death and the works that he wrought through his death, you know, he's given us that understanding. You know, and this is what Paul was speaking about, you know, because during Yahweh Shai's ministry, he taught, the, he taught the true ways of executing the law. He taught these Jews that he came for these this other fold, the lost sheep, which were these Israelite foreigners. So this is how we, we are dead through the works that he wrought, you know, through his ministry, baptism unto his death. Not literally, you know, taking it as it is written. You know, that's why it says, like, as Hamashiach was raised up, you know, also we would be raised up, you know, through that, by that same similitude. And by those redemption of sins, through the things that he taught, through the things written in these epistles that first edified these churches back then, these practicing Jews and these Israelite foreigners, and now we're ed being edified through the Spirit. Through the testimonies, you know, through the witnesses, through the warnings that are written in the scriptures. Being the New Testament and the Old, you know, the law and the prophets. This is why you have to know these etymologies so you can get a, a sure foundation. So this is how we're walking in that newness of life. We're putting off the old works, keeping the commandments, you know. Putting away lust, not hating your own brother, uplifting your people, which is what these other um, uh, man-made religions, you know, they teach you the opposite. There's no profitable works in those things.
Now let's move on to verse 5. For we for if we have been Salakia, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So this is why in the third chapter of John, you know, Yahweh Shai himself used that similitude of the brazen serpent. You know, being lifted in the wilderness. Because ultimately, that was a, a pattern of the things that come to the nation of Israel. Like I explained about the the um the serpent. That was raised for the children of Israel to deliver them. Yahweh Shai being that similitude and using that similitude to bridge the gap between old and new. And to show us that we as a nation would have to be brought low and raised up through him. And through what he taught. Through the power of Most High. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So this is how we're planted together in the likeness of, of his death through the works that he wrought and we're edified and, and, and given that spirit of truth in this time, you know, and we're being raised up because the, you know, resurrection is also um, a spiritual, a spiritual thing. This is why I wish I taught, you know, that God is not the God of the living, or he's not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now let's move on to verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So this saying, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, serving that sin because we know what sin is now. We know what going off is. We know what's required of us. We know we have to pray. We got to fast. You know, we got to hold on to that faith, that belief and show it through our works. You know. This is why when you see your people, you know, you got to see you got to see Christ in them. You know, you, you, you can't hate your, people, your own people. This is why the law is profitable. It tells you what to what to avoid, what to abhor. And it tells you what is righteous, what is justifiable in the eyes of the Most High. And that's a righteous thing not to hate your own people. But you know, our people do that every day. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Dead you know, is an example of, of putting works to an end. You know, not letting sin prosper. You know, when you're given that spirit, you know, you, you avoid you avoid doing things that, that perpetrate sin. Verse 8, For if we be dead with a Mashiach, we believe that we also shall also live with him. You know, like I said, this the works that he wrought, you know, that's how we we are we're dead through through the things that he taught. And we we put away the sin, you know, and we believe we'll be lifted up to, in that same manner. You know, cuz Yahweh Shai, he was he was delivered from that fleshly body by the Father. You know, we have that hope that that we'll be in in like in likewise manner and be glorified. You know, through you know, when He comes to deliver us out of out of this destruction, you know, because destruction is coming to the land. You know, this is what Yahweh Shai taught. Paul taught this. All things are are pattern of things that are to come in the future. You know. So we don't know if we'll get the kingdom. We don't know. We might we might get, you know, um, delivered up. We might get killed. But we have that faith and we're holding on to that faith. Some will escape. You know, some are going to get, you know, beamed up in the chariots. And we believe in these things and we're firm in these beliefs.
Now, uh, moving on to verse 9. Knowing that Hamashiach, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. You know, because when Yahweh Hamashiach, you know, he was, uh, he was, you know, delivered, you know, through his fleshly body, you know, and it was glorified. You know, that's the same similar to that the nation Israel will have to go through. We have to be brought low, then raised up as a nation. You know, in righteousness, through much tribulation, through patience, we have to understand these things that are to come to pass. Including, you know, the Kobe, Kobe Bryant Maxine. You know, we have to be mindful of these things, the mark of the beast. The Lord said, you know, blessed is he who watcheth. So we have to watch for these things that do happen. So when you're grounded, you know, you have that wisdom, you know that, you know, that things are, are, are supposed to happen the way they're happening. This is why the scriptures bring comfort. But, you know, our people, they see it as a burden. They see it, you know, as, as, as a bother. And, and they'll have to pay for that, unfortunately. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Um... Lack in that technical difficulty. For verse 10, for in that he died, he died into sin once, but and then he liveth, he liveth unto God. You know, so we were once given to our sin, you know, and we now know what's required, what we must do. So now we die to our old works and we live unto righteousness, what's acceptable, even if we must suffer for it. Verse 11, likewise reckon ye yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. You know, and that talks about leaving the old works, put, putting them away and not turning back. Verse 12, let not sin reign therefore in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither ye, neither ye yield ye yourselves members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Yahweh. You know, so that's just speaking on, you know, how in times past we, we, we gave ourselves to, to the old works, to these worldly works, to worldly affections, you know, things that didn't profit, these philosophies. But now we're yielding ourselves to, to what's righteous, to the law, keeping the commandments, keeping the feast days, rehearsing the righteous works, you know, letting the truth go out, magnifying the truth. The power of spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now, let me bring this precept out in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. This book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. And it reads, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. So, you know, we have to live to the most high now. You know, we were given that grace time and it, it was a, you know, a very long grace time, you know, because for a long time, you know, we've been going off. Even, even since we were taken out of the land, you know, 
in 70 AD and scattered in all nations. That's 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 grace alone, you know, and grace in this lifetime and in the past lifetimes. You know, so now we're given that grace and we're given that charge, you know, to to let people know what's going on. You know, because the time's short, the most high is gonna make this work short upon the earth. And that's that's a grace. That's real love, you know. To to take us out of the ignorance, you know, of this world, of the per what what Esau perpetrates in his society to our people. You know, the ignorance that religion has 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 perpetrated on our people. So now let's um go back to the book of Romans. Verse 14. This book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You know, so we're under that, that crazy how Mashiach is us, you know, to atone for sins. Know that we may go off at times, but we have to keep getting back up. And we can't forsake the truth. Because the truth is what kept us grounded, you know, in the beginning. So that's what it's speaking of. You know, we're not under... Uh, the um the law, you know, as far as you know the carnal works, but we have to be spiritual and know that we've been given grace, but not to abuse it. Verse fifteen, what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. So again, you can't take the previous verse and make a doctrine out of it. Because Paul, he's not authoritative to the law. What Paul merely makes is comparisons. He uses a lot of similitudes, which which goes from verse to verse. So you can't take a whole doctrine out of one verse and say that he's saying that we're not under the law. He's using a similitude. Because in the next verse, in 15... He says, what then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. So he's using the two comparisons, grace and being under the law. And we know he didn't forsake the law. Because we, in the previous chapter, going to chapter 331, he says we established the law. So what he's saying is we can't abuse either or. We have to continue the law. At the end of the law is obedience. And the law even has the prophecy. So how can we say, you know, that we shouldn't keep the law when the law tells us to obey um, Hamashiach? So all these things go hand in hand. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves members, Salakia, know ye not that to whom ye Yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You know, because we know the wages of sin is death. You know, which is um not death in literal sense, but ultimately, yes, it brings us to death. Like these philosophies, these other doctrines, you know, going off, going astray, denying the truth, not keeping the commandments, not having that faith. All these things lead to that one road, which is death. You know, that's why you see our people dead in all these philosophies and understandings. You know, and not the truth. Because they're spiritually discerned, they're spiritually, spiritually dead. Or of obedience unto righteousness. So now, you know, now's that time we're calling to that obedience. The end of the law being obedience. Obedience, you know, teaches us temperance. and teaches us, you know, the wisdom that's contained in the law and in the prophets. 
So we learn through all these things, all these things go hand in hand. What's taught in the epistles, what Yahweh Shai taught, because it all goes down to Yahweh Shai. Because he taught out of the law and the prophets. So it's, you see all these things go together. And that's that obedience and to righteousness was justifiable in the eyes of the Most High. Verse 17. Um, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that former doctrine which was delivered unto you. You know, so we know that true doctrine, you know, and because we feel it in our spirit, we believe. We believe that these things are true. Through the signs, through the prophecies, through, through the wonders, you know, giving us through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So again, you know, Paul in this chapter, he's he's going from, you know, being dead to sin, you know, forsaking the old way and going into this path was justifiable, the truth, righteousness, which is what he taught, keeping the commandments, you know, having that faith. All these things go together. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members to servants, Salakia, for as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now ye yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. You know, so that's going into forsaking the former works that made us unclean in our thoughts you know how we defiled ourselves in these in these other modes of thinking and obeying the truth and being holy separating from this society from the destructive ways you know that Esau perpetrates in his media and to our people mainly So, actually, let me see if I can bring up this precept in the book of Job, which speaks on that same matter. in the book of Job chapter 36 let me see if I can find that verse the book of Job chapter 36 and verse 5 behold God is mighty and despiseth not any he is mighty in strength and wisdom. Verse 6, He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. Verse 8, If they be bound in fetters, and beholden in cords of affliction, then he sheweth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. You know, so that's going into the nation of Israel, you know. We're given to that, them fetters and them cords of affliction from the times that we've gone off. You know, but now, Most High, you know, He's showing us our work, showing us what is, what is righteous, what is justifiable 
to forsake sin, to forsake wickedness. You know, that's what Paul's talking about in, in this chapter, Romans chapter 6. Verse 10, he open, openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. So again, the scriptures from front to back command us to return, forsake iniquity. Verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. You know, and ultimately it is written for the two thirds of our people, you know, which will deny the truth, deny the divine charge that that the Most High gave to his people. You know, and Esau is ultimately going to be that sword that they're going to die by, that instrument of death. You know, dying without knowledge. And there's some, of our, there's a lot of our people that are already dead. You know, like the Walking Dead, they're, de they're dead without knowledge. You know. Verse 13, but the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. You know, so this is an example of an animal, you know, who who just accepts, you know, the, the whippings, but doesn't know why it's happening. You know, verse 14, they die in youth and their life is among the unclean. You know, so this is our people who deny this knowledge. You know, they live unclean lives. They refuse to... You know, turn from their old ways. This is what it's talking about in the book of Romans. This is what Paul is expounding to these Jews and these Gentiles. So let's go back to um, book of Romans chapter 6. So that's that form of doctrine that, that is given to us. You know, like it says in verse 17. Because from beginning to the end, you know, even Yahweh Shai taught, you know, that the doctrine is not his, but, but him that sent him, you know. So we know these things are divinely inspired, you know. They don't come from men. And this is a divine charge through the prophecies that is given to our people to forsake these ways. You know, forsake, you know, the ways of this land. Because, you know, ultimately, you know, there's a there's a uh, nuclear destruction that, you know, the prophecies speak of has come into Babylon. So now let's um, <clears throat> let's continue um verse 20 for when you were the servants of sin you were free from righteousness you know because we used to be servants of sin and we were we were instead slaves to evil works and we were free you know um, symbolically to what is right to the right way but we were slave instead to the to the negative aspects of what you know society has put our people into into our brains into our minds verse 21 what fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed for the end of those things is death you know and we used to be ashamed of our old works you know because we were we were going astray you know us as a people and the most high made that happen so again, like Paul spoke in the beginning of the chapter, the similitude of our nation being brought low and raised up. Same way, um, like the serpent in the wilderness, you know, which is a symbol of wisdom, you know, now being manifested in these last days. You know, through spirit of power, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. We know the end of, of these other philosophies and doctrines, commandments of men, that's death. We're not going to reach back into death, but we're going to stay on the, on the path, you know, that the Most High 
put us in, everyone into their respective lots. Because like I said, there will be two thirds of our people who will, who will and, and presently they deny the truth. So they got to die for that. And these heathens, you know, Most High has Esau, you know, to hold, to hold them and inflict that wrath in the end for them. So we know the things that are the end of death. We know the things that are that are the end of the light. So again, this was what Paul was teaching these Jews and these Gentiles. Because at that time, Yahweh Shai, when he came on the scene, he made these things manifest. He had given the clarity, you know, of the scriptures. And expounded on the prophecies and, and showed the right way. This is why he gave that parable of the woman and the leaven. Because ultimately, you know, as the truth is manifest through time, even through Adam, you know, that's that leaven, you know. When you have a little a little leaven, you put it in the dough, and ultimately it churns and and leavens the whole fold. So even in the times of Yahweh Shai, you know, that's that similitude of that leaven. <laughs> that leaven was placed in that dough, and little by little, that, that it's leavening the whole lump. So that's not just synonymous with a negative term. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. But Yahweh Shai taught a parable, and it represented the truth being manifested in this due time. And hidden in the three measures of meal. That's why it says that the leaven was hidden, because his truth was hidden. Esau had to publish these things. These things had to, he had to come up with YouTube and have these things manifested so the truth can be manifested. The spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, so we know what the things bring death. Because it said that the knowledge will increase, um, I believe, in the book of Daniel in these last days. But I'm going to focus on this lesson at hand. Lord willing, I'll make a video on that on that also. But let's continue in verse 22. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You know, so we know that we've been called into righteousness, into the things that please the Most High. You know. And that's the true form of grace, you know, to know that you've been in ignorance and now called into called into holiness to be separate, to separate yourself from the works of these heathens and this society. And that that's everlasting life. Because, like I said in the previous verse, you know, none of us had were ashamed to, in these in these previous works that we used to do even back then you know paul speaking to these gentiles you know that were caught up in these in these practices that these greeks and romans uh were caught up in same as the jews at that time you know they were just so they were carnal men stuck in their ways stuck in their in their observances This is why Paul said, you know, at the beginning of this chapter, you know, um, verse 3, many of us were baptized into Yahweh Shai Mashiach, were baptized into his death, because his death brought that life, brought that redemption of sins, you know, brought that understanding, you know, that, that he taught in his life and was manifested through, through even after his death, because the truth was manifested after that. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. So again, you know, this, this chapter was written for us to apply today and to know. So we are instructed on what we must do and compare 
the things written in the other epistles and separate the things that were written for that time for those to to um, at that time to observe and to keep and to apply and what applied to them and there was things that were written for us you know um, to apply today so some things were written so so we know how things went down back then and how it applied to them and there's also things that we must separate like this chapter that literally apply to us and them so again some things are written for us to apply today other things are written so we have an understanding of how things went down back then we have to separate those two things and not be so literal in everything that we read in these epistles mainly in the epistles this is why the epistles can throw a lot of people off because you see Paul he's make he's making a continuous a lot of comparisons continuously you know so there's Jatazadak with his Romans chapter 6 breakdown hero Israel giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Say Shalom.